the board. Come on, shake it up, shake it up. Rig up forward hole number one and two and number five aft. The winches are under steam, so get a move on. Is it? Where's sure, Mr. Abbott? Just a minute, please. Give me up, Diamonds. What I have. Give me up. Hurry up. Try anything like that again, and I'll have to hurt you. I didn't come here to do that. All I want is a diamond. Give them to me. Help! Police headquarters. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Where? No, Dick Tracy isn't here. If it's stay on the wire, I'll call his home. What's so important? Harbor detail reporting murder. On. You certainly are busy, Junior. I got things to do. Holy smoke! What's the matter? Somebody left the receiver off the hook. I detect Tessa's fine hand in that little maneuver. Probably wanted to make sure that you wouldn't be called out tonight. Yeah, that's about it. What of the devil? Hello? Yes, yeah, Tracy speaking. What? Yes. Yes, Pier 30. Got it. We'll be right there. What is it, Dick? They've just reported a murder on the SS Palomar. She docked about an hour ago. Get your hat, Pat. Right. Oh, Chief, please explain to Tess. Tell her I'll see her later. Okay, Dick. A most effective entrance, my dear. I congratulate you on your sense of the dramatic. Friends, if I may have your attention. Skip it, Mr. Flintheart. Dick's gone. Gone? But that's impossible. I have It was a homicide that. case, Tess. Junior found the receiver off the hook. Oh, uh, Junior. Pop out of Mr. Tracy. Anything you want to tell us? Later, boys. Hey, Dick, Mr. Tracy. Thank you. Is this the way everything was when you entered? Yes, sir. Well, it's quite obviously death by strangulation. Strangulation, eh? What about this? Probably the victims. Have a check the fingerprints. He was undoubtedly trying to defend himself. Did Mr. Rabbit ever seem worried or afraid of anything? Why, no. He was always in a good mood. I, I believe he represented a custom jeweler. So I see from these papers. Captain Mason. You mentioned Mr. Abbott's telling about his search for rare jewels. Yes. Did he ever happen to mention any that he was bringing with him on this trip? Why, no. Excuse me, sir, but Mr. Abbott did have a package checked in the safe. I gave it to him shortly before we docked. Pat, get Jules Sparkle's home address and meet me at the car. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Tracy. I called Sparkle's house. I called house. All I wanted was his address. I wanted to surprise him. But Tracy, the dame who answered the phone, I think it was Mrs. Sparkle. Said he was at his office in the Colburn building. Did you say who you were? No. You think I'm dumb? Well, we won't go into that. Come on, let's get going.
expecting someone else. Are you Jules Sparkle? Yes. I'm Dick Tracy, Homicide Squad. Homicide Squad? Uh-huh. My secretary, Miss Clyde. How do you do? Mr. Patton. Hello, Miss Clyde. How do you do? Mr. Sparkle, I've just come from the SS Palomar. Your representative, Lester Abbott, was found in his stateroom murdered. Abbott murdered? Mm-hmm. I can't believe it. It seems so impossible. Abbott was not only a loyal employee, he was an old friend. How long had he worked for you? About 15 years, but I'd known him long before that. Oh, so sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I heard voices. I thought Mr. Abbott was here. Another one of your employees? Yes, our lapidary, Simon Little. Lapidary? A lapidary is a diamond cutter. Sure, what else could he be? You and your staff keep very unusual hours. Well, tonight it was quite necessary. We were all interested in the arrival of some diamonds. And I thought it would be more expedient to meet Mr. Abbott here rather than at the boat. I see. What was the value of the diamonds he was bringing back? The collection was insured for $300,000. <whistles> I'd like a complete list of your employees. But Mr. Tracy, all of my people have been with me for years. I trust them implicitly. I realize that. But whoever killed Abbott knew about the diamonds, knew the boat he was on, knew his cabin number. Therefore, it is quite possible that someone in your firm may have supplied the necessary information. Very well. Mona, will you prepare a list, please? Certainly. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, Mr. Tracy. I want it tonight. Well, it'll take quite a while. I can wait. Very well. Mr. Little, you may leave now, if you like. Thank you. Uh, pardon me. Uh, would you rather I'd stay, Mr. Sparkle? It won't be necessary. I can tell Mr. Tracy anything else he might want to know about Mr. Abbott and the diamonds. Yes, sir. Pat. Yeah? Do you mind running down to the car for those papers? Papers? Yeah, you know, those sketches I made of Abbott's stateroom. Oh, those papers. Sure, I'll get them for you right away. Good night, Mr. Sparkle. Good night, Simon. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night. You're very late, Mr. Little. Yes, much later than I expected. Is Mr. Priceless here? No, he telephoned to say that he was unavoidably detained and couldn't come tonight. Detained? Purposely detained? Leaving me to take the consequences? Mr. Little, cue ball is here. Here? Where is he? Downstairs, sir. Oh, I see. Very well, Rudolph. I'll have some more work for you next week. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Why did you kill him? Why? Why? Because he was going to plug me. Now, look, you and Priceless told me to meet you here to collect my 10 grand. OK. I got the diamonds. Where's my dough? Keep the diamonds. Go to the chair with them. I won't touch them. Oh, yes, you will. There's blood on those stones. Nobody but you and me knows how it got there. Why did I have to get mixed up in a thing like this? Police can't blame me. Priceless came to me. I didn't go to him. He needed me, needed me to recut the stones so they wouldn't be recognized. That's it. It was just a business deal. I didn't know they'd be stolen diamonds or that there'd be a murder. You rat. 
You're in this up to your ears just as much as I am. No, I... I th there must be something I can do. There's something you're gonna do, and that's pay me off. I'm staying right here till I get my dough. Yeah, come to think of it, this joint would make a nice little hideout. Oh, no, you can't stay here. Who's gonna stop me? Oh, please, cue ball the police. Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy? What about Tracy? Well, he's on the case, checking every one of Mr. Sparkle's employees. He, he might even come here. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Okay, I'll blow. But I'll get in touch with you or Priceless tomorrow for my ten grand. Now get me out of here. Oh, yes, gladly. Anything, only just get out. This way. This leads to the storage room, to the street. Don't forget, pal, you better get the dough. There's one more kill and ain't gonna make much difference. Tracy, and good night. Good night, Miss Clyde. Sorry, the shop's closed. I don't want to see the shop. I want to take a look at that note you picked up. Note? I'm from police headquarters. Oh, yes. Come in. I'm uh, Percival Priceless, dealer in... The note of it, please. Oh, yes, the note. I uh, haven't read it myself yet. I'll read it to you. Sorry I wasn't able to keep appointment. We'll drop by tomorrow, MC. I'm afraid it's not as romantic as it sounds. One of my customers, uh, Miss Mona Clyde, asked me to be on the lookout for some, uh, some candlesticks. I located some this morning and called her. She said she'd be in this evening. Uh, these are the ones. Excuse me. Beautiful, aren't they? At least a hundred years old. If, uh, if you were expecting Miss Clyde, why didn't you let her in? Well, she should have been here at least two hours ago. I'd given her up. But you were still here. Yes, in my office, going over some accounts. I, uh, I thought I heard a noise out here and came out to investigate. That's when I saw the paper under the door. She must have thought it was too late. Oh, I see. Mind if I go in here? No, not at all. Please do.
Thank you very much, Mr. Priceless. Not at all. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather like to know why my place has suddenly become of such interest to the police. Oh, it's just a routine checkup. Sorry to have bothered you. Good night. Good night. privacy in this joint. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Take your time. I'm coming. Shut up, you. You were playing that same song for an hour. He wants me to. I don't care what he wants. Play it again. Play it again. Play it again? Of course he'll play it again. Lovely number, ain't it, dearie? Well, play it. Hello, Kathy. Hiya, Flora. Why, cue ball. Hiya, Flora. Fine. Give me a drink, Max. Okay. I thought they put you away for ten years. They did. Ten years. Time sure flies, don't it? Not where I was, it don't. <laughs> That'll cost you. Same old Flora. What do you want of me? I want a place to live. You ain't the only one, dearie. Things have changed since you went away. Well, I've got a waiting list for everything in the joint, even the closets. I gotta have a place, Flora. I gotta have a place. I thought you just got out of jail. How'd you get in trouble so soon? I need any trouble. I just want a place where I can meet somebody. Well, there's a room I reserve for special customers. I'll pay you for it. Pay you good. <laughs> You're darn right you'll pay me good. Come on. <laughs> drink up, girls. Drink up. <laughs> Go on in, you ball. Chair out of the way. Lift it up. Where is that, Lisa? To a little room. That's where I kept Fang Face Martin hidden for weeks when the cops were looking for him. Thanks, Flora. That looks perfect. And since we're such good friends, dearie, I'm going to make you a special rate for this room 500 bucks a night. 500 bucks? Well, you dirty old bag out of. Never mind the compliments. It's payable in advance. Flora. You know I can't pay that kind of dough. Not now. I just got out. Yeah, you just got out. You just got off a boat, too, didn't you, dearie? 300 grand. What a dirty, cheap double cross. I thought you had something to do with it. Yeah, I thought you could afford 500 bucks. You'll get your dough, Flora. And so will I. I ain't gonna collect 300 grand and pay me off with peanuts. <laughs> Hi, Doc. Hello, Dick. Happen? Mm hmm. Want anything that will help us, Doc? Not yet. Ooh. What happened to you? I, um, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you see, I was standing in front of Simon Little's place, and boom, something hit me. And the next thing I know, I'm lying there on the street with a cop standing over me, trying to arrest me for vagrancy. Vagrancy? Yeah, and I argued with the guy for you 20 sure minutes. You sure it wasn't Simon Little who hit you? Oh, no. Not unless he dropped a basket of bricks, and that's what it felt like. Say, Dick, let's take a look at this. It might be important to us. I hope so. 
I uh, found it embedded in Abbott's neck. Right over the carotid gland. There you are. Looks like a piece of leather. That's right. I'd say that Abbott was strangled with a leather belt or a strap of some kind. I think you're right, Doc. At least now we've got something to work on. Yeah. Say, do you need me any more tonight? No, that's all. Thanks. Good. Now I can go home and get to bed early for a change. And uh, you can put the silent one to bed early, too. Pat. Yeah? Do you know an antique dealer by the name of Percival Priceless? No, has he something to do with this case? Yes, I think so. Do you know anything about antiques? Well, a little. I know an old gal singer. She works up at Spider's Web. She's about, uh, no, about no, five no. foot... That's not what I mean. Oh. Well, that's all we can do tonight. Yeah, I guess so. See you in the morning. Right. Say, I wonder if Vitamin Flintheart knows anything about antiques. Well, he ought to. He's old enough. Have him come in and see me tomorrow. I'll have a little job for him. Okay. Good night, Doc. Good night. Night, Pat. Night. Higby, bring uh, that Victorian vase, please. Do you mean this one, sir? Yes. Oh, very good. This is a very rare piece. I believe Mr. Price has found it in an old New England farmhouse. Perhaps this is the one you had in mind, sir. No, no, no. I'm afraid not. Not only is its authenticity questionable, but it lacks that purity of line which is so essential to my requirements. Just precisely what are your requirements, sir? I've shown you several examples. I am furnishing my mausoleum. It is essential that every line be in the purest Grecian harmony. I could not enjoy my perennial solitude in the knowledge that there was something imperfect in my surroundings. Excuse me. Ah, oh, good afternoon, Miss Clyde. Good afternoon. We have your uh, candlesticks in the office. Will you step this way, please? Surely. Higby, take care of the gentleman, will you, please? Oh, yes, Mr. Priceless. Now that... Uh, perhaps we... Something else you'll find... You were saying? Uh, perhaps we have something else you'll find appealing. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, uh, by George! Now, now, that's interesting. What is? Uh, that vase up there. <laughs> Unless my eyes are playing me tricks, it's a rare and beautiful example of early Grecian workmanship. How oh, your mind wanders. Here, fetch down the vase, man. Fetch it down. There's only one other like it in existence. It belongs to my old friend, Lady Casserole. Upper Norton on Tyne, Woodsley's Hollow, Oakfield by Sea in southeastern Nottinghamshire, in merry old England. Fetch it down, fella. Fetch it down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't seem very pleased to see me. Oh, of course I am. But why? Why did you have to come here last night? Dick Tracy was at Sparkle's office, and I wanted to warn you. Fine warning you gave me. You led Tracy right to my door. He came here? Yes, he followed you. You should have known he would. Did he find out anything? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Well, then, stop worrying. We've got other troubles. Cuball won't give up the diamond until he gets his 10,000. And Simon Little wants to pull out of the deal. Simon wants to pull out? Excellent, excellent. Well, that's hardly something to worry about, my dear. We split only two ways now. But who'll cut the stones for us? Why well, have other contacts? How life continually disappoints us. This is not the invaluable object I presumed, but a mediocre copy. Are you sure, sir? Quite positive. I return it to the obscurity it deserves. Yes. I am a recognized antiquary fully capable of differentiating between uh, the inspired original and a clumsy part of it. Good afternoon, Miss Clyde. Good afternoon. And I'll have the candlesticks delivered. Oh, thank you very much. And suddenly a very, very exciting thing happened. Just as I was trying to overhear what they were saying in there, the door opened and Miss Clyde came out. With the candlesticks? No, no. Priceless said he would send them to her. And then the wench left. Yes, sir. Steve, get hold of Pat and tell him I want to see him right away. Right, Chief. Thanks, Spiderman. You've been a big help. Oh, it was nothing, old boy, nothing. Ah, I made a little purchase while there. A garter. A garter? Mm -hmm. It has quite a history, old boy. Mm. 
Quite a history. Uh, what a pity. Why do the young have all the youth? What time? When? Now, right away in Flora's private office. Bless you, sir. A dollar. Come on, Pat, let's go. You cover the back way. Stop anyone who tries to get out. Let's have the dough. Well, you see, Cubal, Don't we... try to hold out on me. The price has gone up. But Cubal, we... It's double. I want 20 grand. It's little enough for getting 300,000 bucks worth of ice. I got you dirty chiselers where I want you. Now you're gonna pay. Hello, Flora. Hi, Mr. Tracy. I ain't seen you for a long time. That's because you've been such a good girl. Sit down, Flora. I ain't done nothing wrong, dearie. Honest, I ain't. Relax. This is purely a social call. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Yes, yes, I know you've asked for more money, but all I could raise was $5,000. Before I give it to you, I want to see the diamonds. You're not getting those stones. Not for a measly five grand, you ain't. <laughs> Who's out there? Shut up. So, you dirty stupid, you call the cops, huh? No, what do you mean? Don't play dumb, you know Tracy's here. Tracy, no, I didn't call the detectives. He's I... gonna help you. No, no, wait a minute, Cubo. Cubo, I'll give you the money. Cubo, here, I'll give you the money. Take the money. Cubo! Ah! Open up in there. You all right, Pat? Yeah. It's a lucky thing for me. I got hit on the head. Come on, let's go. You better pack your game in. 
on the head will make me dizzy. Why, well, I can see just as well. Look out. Okay. Certainly, just another bump on the head. No use chasing him now. I better put in a general alarm. That's fine. Radio's broken. Stay here. I'll have the phone headquarters. Okay. All right, stand aside. Stand aside. Let me in. Are you hurt? No, no. Oh, you're new on the force, aren't you? Yeah. You sure you're all right? Oh, just a little dizzy. Dizzy, eh? So that's it. You're drunk. Drunk? No, I'm not drunk. And stealing a police car, too. No, no, you don't understand. Have you got your driver's license? No, I don't have a driver's license. No driver's license. No, no driver's license. You, you... Oh, and getting tough with an officer, too. No, look, this is Dick Tracy's car. Oh, it is, is it? Hmm? And I suppose you're going to tell me you're Pat Patton. No, of course not. Then who are you? Pat Patton. Ba get out of the car. No. Are you going to get out of the car, or do I have to use... Oh, no, no, not again. So you haven't seen Pat Patton, have you? He was supposed to... Never mind, he just came in. Bye. Where have you been? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Then don't tell me. I'll tell you anyhow. I was over at the... Tracy? Yes? I've got that report from the coroner. The markings on Price's throat are identical with those found on Abbott. Same markings, eh? Yes. Good, thanks. That's the best lead we've had so far. You mean the same guy's responsible for both murders? Mm-hmm. Price was had $2,000 in his clothes when we found him. He was probably at the dripping deck and tickling for those diamonds. Sure adds up. Most likely, Filthy Flora was hiding our mystery man since the Abbott killing. Which means she ought to know a thing or two. Come on, we're going to have a little talk with Filthy Flora at the dripping dagger. Oh, every time I get near that joint, I feel like I need a bottle of DDT. Look down there. He's got to be up here someplace. Find those diamonds if I have to tear this place apart. Expect you back so soon. No, I guess you didn't. Did you figure on going out for her? Yeah, just going out for a walk. I, I wanted a breath of fresh air. Maybe you better put off that walk until a little bit later. I got something I want to talk over with you. You mean about the rent, Cubo? Oh, that, that can wait till next week. No, it ain't the rent. Oh, just a social call, eh? Paying your old sidekick Flora a friendly visit. Sure, sure. That's it. Just a friendly visit. Well, that's nice of you, dearie. Uh, let's sit down and have a drink for old time's sake. This one will be on the house. Okay, Flora. Looks like you was trying to find something here. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't find my scarf. I wanted to wear it and I went out for a walk. You didn't happen to look under the wash basin for it, did you? Wash basin? Why, what would my scarf be doing under there? I ain't talking about your scarf. I'm talking about my diamonds. They were under there until you got your hooks on them. Now hand them over. I haven't got your diamonds, cue ball. Honest, I ain't. Are oh, you lying, old bag? Now you're going to give me them diamonds, you don't have to take them. Just try and take them. Just try and take them. Now, wait a minute, Flora. Maybe we could talk this over. There's enough there for both of us. We could split 50-50. Ah! 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 You wait here. All right.
Daniel Price's antique dealer found murdered. And then, as night fell, the killer struck again, leaving filthy Flora's body cold and lifeless in the office of her waterfront cafe known as the Tripping Dagger. According to Dick Tracy, head of the Homicide Squad, the markings on the throat of each of the victims indi indi indicate... Thanks. You're welcome. Indicates that the... That the same criminal is responsible for each of the murders. Oh, gee. Just when it's getting good. Yeah. See who it is. Okay. But don't read any more till I get back. Right. Oh, good morning, Butch. Morning, Miss Truhart. Are you ready to go to the Rodeo? Remember, we have to leave early if we want to get good seats. I remember, all right. I'll go home and get ready and be right back. That's a good boy. Hello, Junior. Hi, Tess. Boy, what a story they got on Filthy Flora's murder. Having Mr. Tracy in the business is enough crime for one family without you reading about it in newspapers. Oh, gee, Tess. Well, good morning, Tess. How are you? Fine, thank you, darling. I was just having a little discussion with Junior over his reading matter. It was about the murders, Dick. Well, I see what you mean. Better have this before you leave for the Rodeo. But I gotta keep up with what's going on. You'd do a lot better to keep up with your schoolwork. Oh. Tess is right, Junior. Say, how would you like a lifetime job showing Junior what to read? Why, Dick Tracy proposing so early in the morning. Why don't you marry him so he can stop proposing? Just a minute, young fella. I can speak for myself. Everybody, reach for the ceiling. Put him up. What? You heard what the man said. Put him up. Nobody move. Don't try any of your tricks. What is this? Oh, he thinks he's Jesse James. No, sir. Today I'm Buffalo Bill. You don't have to put your hands up, Junior, because you're drinking a glass of milk. Thanks. You're welcome. And now I'm going to shoot you, Dick Tracy, because you're an Indian. Butch, let me see that hat. Save your breath, partner. You can't talk your way out of this one. Butch. Don't move, Redskin, or you'll bite the dust. Butch, will you please let me see that you hat? You just want me to take off my hat so you can scalp me. Butch, will you Head please? Head the hills, men. The varmints are gonna attack. Bam, bam, bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Butch. I'm not an Indian. For goodness sakes, Dick, why is Butch's hat so important all of a sudden? I don't want the hat. It's that hat that I've got to see. Oh, the kids got those bands. They have? Where'd they get them? Send away for them. Here, I'll show you. It's advertising this magazine. Oh, here it is. There. There's it. City. Operator, to Dick Tracy. Box 520, Desert City, is post office, address, Rocky Mountain Penitentiary. Rocky Mountain Prison. Know anybody up there, Chief? Why, the warden is an old friend of mine. Take a wire. Yes, sir. Listen to this. Prisoner you refer to was released six weeks ago after serving ten years. He is Harry Lake, alias Bernie Burns, alias Frisco Joe, alias Q-Ball. Description is as follows. Yeah, I didn't read the description. I'll take care of the description. Broadcast room. You look him up in the files. Right. Tracy speaking. The killer in the diamond case has just been identified. Broadcast this description immediately. <laughs> About. Why not? I think it's very funny. You should be able to take it, Chief. We've been kidded by the press before. But they're giving the public the impression that cue ball is in plain sight and we can't even see him. Why don't they draw a picture showing how we scour the city, how we took the dripping dagger apart board by board, how we've kept a constant watch on that antique shop and Mona Clyde's apartment? 
No, we don't want that publicized. Well, I can't say that I enjoy this kind of publicity. Nick, I don't care what you do or how you do it, but we've got to get some action. Where to? Uh, 319 East 4th Street. 319 East 4th Street, driver. My workshop cue ball wasn't there. He's gone. You're lying. I'm not. I looked everywhere. I waited. And what about Miss Belmont? Where's she? She isn't here yet. Oh, you're the one who's lying. There never was such a person. You've tried to trick me so you can get the diamonds for yourself. You're insane. What about my call to Miss Belmont? How do I really know who you are talking to? Oh, no. You can't fool me. I'm going. Tracy. Hello, Mr. Little. Well, where's Miss Belmont? I don't know who you're talking about. Miss Clyde, I was at Miss Belmont's suite this afternoon when you made the appointment with her. Now, where is she? I don't know. She left her hotel more than 10 minutes ago. Did you give her instructions to meet you somewhere else? No, I didn't. I haven't spoken to her since this afternoon. Pat. Yeah? Check with headquarters and see if they've heard from Tess. Right. I told you to take me. You want the diamonds, don't you? Where's Mona Clyde? Mine's have been changed. She's meeting you here. Come on. Upstairs. instructions were. Miss Belmont was supposed to meet us here. Just a minute. Do you have an extension? Why, yes, in the bedroom. All right, answer that. Play it straight, no tricks. Hello? Yes. Simon Little? Just a moment. Hello? Mr. Little? Oh, yes, Rudolph. Right. Thank you, Mr. Get those two down to headquarters. Right, Mr. Tracy. All right, get your coat on, lady. I tell you, I refuse to discuss the diamonds unless Miss Clyde is here. It's too bad, sister. Double crossing Clyde Dam ain't gonna be here. Then I'm leaving. What's the matter? Ain't I good enough for you to do business with? I got the diamonds. One of Clyde hasn't. I give me the dough. Don't be silly. I wouldn't carry that much money around with me. Stop stalling. You want the diamonds, don't you? Well, here they are. Oh, I told you I have Don't give me that. You was ready to give Mona Clyde cash? No, I was just going to look at the diamonds. You're a liar. You got the dough right here in your purse. No, you're wrong, I tell you. Dick Tracy. So that's it. This is a plant.
Well, Dick, it's a little late for the celebration, but you're going to have your party anyhow. And this time, the phone is going to stay off the hook. This time, I'm inclined to agree with you. And this time, Dick Tracy, I shall deliver my oration without interruption. <laughs> Friends, <clears throat> Romans, countrymen. <laughs> Will crime never cease? Dick! Dick! Sorry, honey. Save me some cake. Oh, no, not again. Uh -huh. 